A few months ago, I made a manga animation tutorial where I showed you how to do simple animations, but we had to use a different app or website besides DaVinci Resolve. Today, I'll show you how to create a manga eye opening and blinking animation, all within the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Let's take a look at what we're about to create. Alright, so as you can see I have this manga page of Fubuki which I am going to use. The first thing we are going to do is right click here and create a new fusion composition. You can change the duration and name as needed and then click on create. Next drag the fusion composition to the timeline and place it at the beginning. Then bring the playhead on top of the clip and click on the fusion page icon. By default, you'll see a media out note. Go to the media pool, click and drag your manga page to the work area. Connect the output of this node to the input of the media out node. To focus on the current task, head to the top right corner of the second viewer and click on this icon to enable single view mode. This simplifies our view, which is essential for the next steps. We'll blur out our current node to avoid confusion later. Click on the media in node and add a blur effect. Initially, you won't see any changes, so navigate to the inspector window and increase the blur size slightly. This helps to make our work easier. Click on the media in Node again and press Ctrl plus C to copy it. Move your cursor around here, click once to deselect, and then press Ctrl plus V to paste. Connect the output of this new node to the output of the blur node, which will automatically create a merge node. Now we will mask out each part of the eye, such as both eyelids, pupil, eyebrow, etc. We'll start with the lower eyelid. But before that, click on the merge node, press F2, and rename it. It is crucial to rename each part properly, otherwise you will get confused. Click on the media in node, then add a polygon mask to it. You will notice that our current media has vanished, and we are seeing the background node since we don't have any mask right now. For those who don't know, you can create a mask by simply clicking on the viewer and adding points. Once you go back and click on the first point, it will create a closed mask. With the polygon mask, you can create any shape you want which makes it very useful. If you click on these points, you will see bezier handles. You can make a curvy shape by simply dragging these handles, but it can be a bit tricky. Now let me delete this mask since we don't need it right now. All right, so we wanna mask out the bottom eyelid, but it's too blurry right now. To address this, we'll go to the inspector window and disable this mask for now. Don't worry, you can still draw. Use control and scroll wheels to zoom in and out and click and hold the middle mouse button to pan around. Now start drawing around this black line of the eyelid. You can add points like I am doing, or use the traditional method you're familiar with from other software. It simply depends on the shape of your manga character. Once you reach the end of the eyelid, continue drawing the rest like me. Make sure to extend a little bit outside the eyelid. It's really important. Let me show you a simple trick to make things easier and save some time. Select all the points that you want to give a curvy look, then click on this icon. It will smooth them out, and now you can adjust them as needed. This just makes things a little easier. Take your time and adjust the mask properly. Be patient, there's no need to rush. Your effect will look good or bad depending on how well you drew the mask, so do it properly. One useful tip, you can click in between two points to add another point in case you need to refine the shape. Don't hesitate to do so. Once you're done masking, you can enable the polygon mask node again to view the result. If you notice, our mask currently has hard edges, which can be good in some cases, but not for this one. To fix this, go to the inspector window and increase the soft edges a little bit. This will help smooth out the mask and make it blend more naturally with the surrounding area. Paste the media in node again and connect its output to the output of the lower eyelid. Repeat the same masking process as before. Remember, masking can be time consuming, so take your time to ensure each mask is accurately drawn. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll skip through this process to keep the video concise and focused. All right, I've finished masking each part as required. Let's quickly review each part, in case you wanna see how each specific part looks. Take a quick look at the pupil, and also note that the white part of the eye is called the scara, so I've named it accordingly. I've also cut out the eyebrow since it moves as we move our eyes. Additionally, I masked out some hair strands that were overlapping the eye. For more details, you can watch the first manga animation video. I've added it in the eye button. The next step is crucial. 
so pay close attention. We need to adjust some nodes. If you see, our blurry background is at the bottom of every node, and it's the first node on the left. In the case of the eye, the white part will be at the bottom part. So, what we will do is select all three nodes of this scara, press and hold shift, and then move the nodes to the left. Once you see the blue and yellow lines, release the keys, making sure they are connected properly. Now we will position the pupil after the scara. Let me adjust these nodes first. Select all three nodes of the pupil and drag them like before. Well, I don't have to change anything since the other parts of the eye come on top of these two, but make sure to adjust accordingly. Now we will paint out some of the parts that are overlapping each other. First, go to the top right corner and enable two viewers. Let's start with the scara. I'll drag it to the left. If you see, the scara is supposed to be white only, but we also have the eyelash, pupil, etc. which is why we need to paint them out so that each part exists separately. Click on this media in node and add a paint node. Before doing anything, make sure you are on frame zero. Don't forget that. Go to the inspector window and change the stroke duration to the last frame of your composition, which in my case is 150 frames. Now drag the paint node to the left viewer to see the changes. If you hold control then left click and drag, you can change the brush size. Take the color picker and choose a color, but since it's already white, it doesn't matter that much. Start drawing around the parts you want to erase. One thing to keep in mind is to always choose the color from the nearby area that you want to erase. This helps blend in more easily. However, in this case, it doesn't matter that much. You don't have to be perfect with the painting, but don't go too far from the edges. Although this part will stay at the bottom, it's still important to be careful. Now we'll move on to the pupil. Repeat the same steps as before. Click on the media in node, add a paint node, change its stroke duration to the last frame, and start drawing. For this, we only need to erase the eyelash, but be careful not to delete the middle by accident. If your eyelash overlaps, just erase it like me. Now you can pick the black color and paint it nicely so it looks good. Repeat the same process for every other part. Here's one thing to keep in mind. If you take a look at this point, you'll see I have some parts of hair strands overlapping. I can't simply paint over it because that would erase the details of the eyelid as well. In this case, go to the inspector and select the double brush option. This is the clone tool. Now press Alt and left click to select the area you want to clone from. Then release the key and just left click to clone. Do it little by little. Don't try to cover a big area at once, otherwise you'll mess it up. Continue painting by following these methods, but I'll skip ahead from here. All right, once you've finished painting all the parts, click on the blur node and delete it. Now we need to erase the entire eye from our main media in node. Let me show you why this is necessary. As you can see, even though we have each part separated, the background node still includes them. That's why we must erase them from here. Click on the media in node and add a paint node. Change the stroke duration as before, and then simply start drawing to erase every part that you masked. Once done, you will have this. Now let's move on to the actual animation. We'll start with the lower eyelid. Click on the media in node, then press shift plus space and search for the grid warp node. Shortcut is GRD. After adding it, you'll see grid lines. We'll use these to animate. First change the magnet type to select it. Now go to somewhere around frame 20, then go to the inspector window. At the bottom right, click on the diamond icon to add a keyframe. Now move to frame zero, then go to the viewer and click on these points, drag them upwards like this. You can also use these handles for finer control. I want to make it a little bit flatter so that it looks natural. It totally depends on how you want it to look like, but make sure to do it carefully. Let me adjust the preview area a bit. And now if we play, we will have something like this. Now let's animate the upper eyelid. Click on the media in node and add a grid warp node. Change the magnet type to select it. Go to frame 20 and add a keyframe as we did before. Then go to frame zero and drag the points downward to close the eye. Make sure to do this carefully and don't drag too much. Follow the same steps to animate the eyebrow as well. Now let me show you how to animate the pupil. It's actually simple. Go to frame 20 again, then click on the pupil. Go to the inspector and add a keyframe for center XY. 
On frame 0, bring down the Y value to make it look like the pupil is moving. We will have something like this. You can also change the X value if you want the pupil to move left or right. It totally depends on your preference. Now it's time to create a blink animation, which is actually quite easy. Click on the grid warp node of lower eyelid. Then go to frame 0 and select all the grid points. Press Ctrl plus C to copy them. Then move 10 frames forward from where your animation ended, which is frame 30. Press Ctrl plus V to paste the copied points. Go to frame 20 and copy the points from there. Then move to frame 40 and paste them. You can also choose to move 5 frames instead of 10, depending on how fast you want the blink animation to be. Now just repeat the same process for all the other nodes except for the pupil. Take your time and do it properly. If you get confused, don't rush. Once you've applied these steps to all the nodes, you will achieve the same result as I have. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, be sure to check out my other videos and give this one a like. If you have any questions related to this video, feel free to ask in the comments.